trying to find some of the places, this little um, little deserted cemetery for one. I was using that GPS and it reminded me that when you travel, you sometimes need help and you, you really do. And how many of you have done some travel this, this summer already? Your travels are done. How many of you still plan to do a little traveling by between now and then? Wow, maybe I won't see you again for a few weeks then. <laughs> But uh, when you travel on the road, you do need guidance and you do need uh, to know where you're going. That's one of the most important things. We used to do it with the maps and now most of us will, will follow a GPS. But you need to know where you're going. You need to have some sense of direction. And you also need to know that you're uh, going to be safe on your trip. So uh, all of us who do some, some traveling by driving especially... Uh, we'll always seek the Lord. I know Judy and I, before we go on any trip, including when we come here or when we go any other place, we always pause before we leave and say, Lord, we commit our trip to you. We ask you for safety and protection and guidance and uh, that you'll, you'll keep your hand upon us all the way along. And the Lord is, is faithful to do that. That doesn't mean that some who have had difficulties, accidents, or things of that nature, uh, because of their own failure to pray, are responsible. Sometimes, according to God's plan, we know that things do occur, but they're never out of His will and out of His control. And the, the little psalm that we are looking at in the final uh, one of our psalm series this summer is Psalm 121, and we read it just earlier in the service. It's the, uh, the last of these several psalms that we've been looking at. It's called by many people the Traveler's Psalm, and rightly so, because it talks about uh, the Lord's keeping power, His guidance, and His protection over us. And we know that God is a sovereign God, and He does have power over all things, and He protects those who travel. And uh, we've said it before, these psalms are really songs. They're songs that were sung in worship. Many of you know this Psalm 121 is from that little section of psalms, about 15 of them, beginning with Psalm 120, called the Songs of Ascents, the songs that would be used by the uh, Israelite pilgrims as they would make their way to Jerusalem for one of those three feast days where they went on an annual basis. And they would use these short psalms to sing because they were songs that were meant to be sung as they were making their way. Let's look at it again. It's a very brief psalm, and it's familiar to so many of us. In fact, we sang it a little bit earlier, and there are other versions of that psalm that have been set to music. And it's uh, sometimes uh, memorized by a number of people because it is so easily memorized, being short as it is. But it's significant in the fact that it's talking about God's protection power. And if you can envision a traveler in the midst of, of this, uh, this psalm and think of traveling with this psalm in mind. But we begin by uh, starting out here in this psalm. And if you imagine yourself as one of those pilgrims who is about to leave their hometown and set out for the city of Jerusalem for one of those feast days, as the psalm writer says at the beginning, I lift up my eyes to the hills. You would do that. You would probably be looking at the horizon and looking at the hills on the horizon and seeing how far you would have to travel. And then as you, you would look down through those valleys, you would see many of the winding roads that would be in between you and those mountains in the, in the distance. And as the psalmist says, when I look to those mountains and see the distance that I have to go as I'm starting out on my journey, I ask myself or I ask this question, where, where is the help that I need going to come from? It's going to be a long journey, an arduous journey, and you're going to need help to get there. So you realize the help that you need isn't found in yourself or in your fellow pilgrims, but it's found in the one who is the ultimate object of your truth. And that's what the psalmist says. Where does my help come from? It comes from the Lord. And that word, the Lord, is actually the word Yahweh, who is, who is the God of Israel. He is the one who made the heavens and the earth. On your journey as you start out, you're going to be able to depend on God's help because he's available to you. He's there for the entire journey. His help is founded 
on who he is. He created all of the heavens and the earth. Aren't you glad that the helper that you have is the one who made everything, who is all-powerful, who knows the beginning from the end? This is not just someone who, who may be limited in his ability to help, but he is the God who has all power and all authority, who always was, who always will be. He is the creator of all things. You start out on your journey with this assurance that God is your help and your helper. And because of that, it's going to be okay. When you start with that assurance, you have great confidence that the journey before you is going to be a journey that will be protected by him. Whether that's a journey that you will take for a short term when you travel on your vacation, or whether it's the journey that you would say is the course of my life, God is my helper. That's the confidence and the declaration of the psalm writer at the first verse. And then as he proceeds, notice in the, the next section, there's uh, four little sections there. It says in verse three, uh, as you're on the road, you understand some things about protection. He will not let your foot be moved. He begins, this psalm writer, by talking about God's protection in these terms. There are dangers on the way, so you need someone who is strong enough and present enough to protect you, and your trust needs to be in him. But there are some things you need to know about him that will bolster your confidence in him. First of all, there are some things that this protector, this helper won't do. He won't let your foot slip. He won't let you fall. He is there to be at your side. You notice he says also that he will not fall asleep. <laughs> he won't be uh, uh, looking the other way or, or sleeping when you need him. Some of you travel like I do uh, sometimes for long distances. We do that when we visit many of our children, and it's usually Judy and me in the car. And sometimes I'm when I'm driving, I'm prone to uh, get a little tired. I, I try to deal with that by chewing gum. You might have another trick that you have for doing that. But there are times when I depend upon my wife to stay awake to keep me awake. <laughs> but have you had the experience that the one who tries to, who was supposed to keep you awake just kind of dozes off? Uh, you can have every assurance that God is never going to do that. He's never going to fall asleep on you. He's going to be watching you. He's going to be caring for you. He won't be unavailable to you whenever you need him. What a wonderful assurance this is, that God is always alert. God is always awake. You remember when Elijah in the Old Testament was uh, in, involved in the prophets with Baal, and they, the, the worshipers of Baal were calling out to their gods, and uh, Elijah said to them, well, shout louder. Maybe he's asleep. Maybe he's gone to the washroom. I think that's a great, a great line that he's, uh, Elijah said. But they said, maybe you need to wake him up. And uh, that's the way that some of those pagan gods were, you know. They, they weren't uh, almighty, so they needed to be aroused. But not our God, not our keeper. He is continually alert and always aware of us. He will not let our foot slip, and he will never slumber or sleep. So those are the things that he won't do. And then it talks about who, who he is to us. So what he won't do and then who he is. Look at verse four. It says, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. That word keeper is used as you can see, six times in this psalm. It is synonymous with the word protector. He is the one you can depend upon to keep you safe. He will always be there for that purpose. He, when he says he is your shade on your right hand, that's a very picturesque thing. Somebody standing right next to you with the sun shining in this direction and his shadow falls upon you. That's the picture of God being that close. He is at your right hand. He is right exactly where you are. And his shadow falls upon you because he is present with you and he will never leave your side. He is close by. You'll be protected, as he said, from danger day and night. The sun will not strike you by day or the moon by night. 
Some people think of this as relating to, to sunstroke or something in that nature. I just, I think it's one of those inclusive phrases. They call it a merism in, in the Hebrew poetry. It talks about the totality of something. The sun in the morning and the moon at night. Every day during the daytime and every night during the nighttime and every hour in between, you will be protected from danger because God is close by. He is at your side. He will help you and be there with you continually because he's standing right there with you to protect you. What a wonderful promise that is to those who belong to him. He will keep us from all harm. He is our keeper. He is our protector. And then the other verses tell us what he will do. We've seen what he won't do. He won't let your foot slip. He won't uh, slumber or sleep. But this is what he will do in verse 7. It says, the Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The evil that is spoken of there are the perils of life, the dangers that are on the journey on the road, every threat to your safety, not just on the highways, but every threat to you in the course of your life. And there are all kinds of threats to all of us every day that we live. There are evils and dangers around about us. And we know that we have an enemy who is seeking to uh, trip us up and to, like a, a roaring lion, to, to devour us. But the psalmist is saying, God will keep you. He will keep your life. He will preserve you, every part of you. He will keep you from danger and from evil. Every day that we live, we need to understand that and we need to claim it. And in our prayer times, we need to remind God and, and re rehearse before God the promises that he has made to us for protection. He will keep your life. Verse 8 says he will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. That's another merism, another uh, one beginning and one end. Going out is the is when you depart on your journey. Coming in is when you arrive, you finish your journey. And every day and every hour in between, he is there to keep you. He will keep you, as he said, now and forevermore. Your present and your future. So on this journey, he will be there for you in every way. He will guarantee your safety and your safe arrival. Now, someone always says, well, Pastor Bob, I, I know that there are people who have depended upon the Lord for that, and they have had their accidents, and they have had injuries or health problems and so on, and we know that to be true. This psalm does not negate those issues of life that do encroach in on us, but we know beyond all of that that God is still sovereignly in control of all of our issues of life that nothing will ever touch our lives that doesn't first come through his loving hands. Even if we do experience some of the things that we would like to, like to avoid experiencing, his presence with us and his power over us will keep us in the midst of those challenges and those dangers. So this traveler's song or this song of protection, it's been a source of comfort and encouragement to, to people of God for all these many generations. And it ought to be a source of comfort and encouragement to us as well. It's a wonderful song for us to share on our journey. It should take away the worry and, and the anxiety off our minds so that when we are traveling, both on our life journey and on our individual journeys, we look to him to be our helper and our keeper. We seek him to be at our side every day and in every step that we take. And even when we encounter the dark and dangerous times, we count on his protection. You remember those verses from Psalm 23, the great shepherd song of David. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. What a song this is in communicating to the trusting child of God, this, uh, this reassurance of God's presence and his protection over us in our life journey, in its totality, and in our individual 
travels. You remember the poetess Fanny Crosby, the blind poetess who wrote so many of the hymns that we sing. She wrote that song, All the way my Savior leads me. What have I to ask beside? Can I doubt his tender mercies, who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in him to dwell. For I know whatever befalls me, Jesus doeth all things well. He's going to lead us all the way of our journey. And we know that when we know God personally and claim him as our helper and our keeper, that we are able to depend upon his presence with us every day that we live. I wonder in your heart of hearts if you have that rich assurance today that you know, as the psalmist said, that my help comes from the Lord and the Lord is my keeper. I wonder if you have that assurance that he is that to you. He is your helper and your keeper. You can know that. And we can know it on the basis of God's word. When we come in faith to God, believing his promises to us and believing in the gift of his son, we are able to have that special relationship with him. We can be related to him as God, as our father. Some people talk about uh, we are all God's children. You've heard that phrase so many times. People use it a lot these days. We're all God's children. But you know, the, trend, the fact is we are not all God's children in the sense that he is related to us and, and we can claim to be his child. Only those who know him in a personal way can claim to be a child of God. And that's what Jesus taught us, that if we would have God as our heavenly father, our heavenly protector, our helper, our keeper, then we must know him personally and individually. And we come to know him by placing our faith in his son, Jesus Christ. I know that probably most of you here this morning know Jesus in that way. I know you because uh, having gotten to know you, I know there are many, perhaps uh, most of those who attend on our Sunday mornings, you would say, that's me. I know him, I am his child. But it could be that there's someone here this morning who needs to know that you must place your faith in Christ in order to be a child of God. I would encourage you to do that because it is the child of God who is secure in his love. It is the child of God who doesn't need to fear anything because he's under the protection of the one who created the heavens and the earth. He is kept by the one who is all powerful and always present. So we need to take courage when we travel. When we travel this path of life and when we travel our individual journeys because we have a helper, a keeper, and he's committed to protect us and bring us safely home. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together. Father, this wonderful psalm that reassures us of who you are and what you are doing in protecting your people is a great encouragement to us. Thank you for including it in your word. Thank you for the personalization that it can have for all of us. I pray for every person in this room today, for every saint, everyone who is trusted in Jesus, that you will, you will remind them of who you are to them, their helper, their protector, their keeper. And for any who have come to join with us in worship today, who have yet to understand the need to come under your protection by faith in Jesus, I pray today that those hearts and that individual may come in faith to you, seeking you as Savior. And I pray that you will cause them to understand that it is by coming to know you in that way that you can be their keeper as well. We're grateful to you, our Father. Thank you for being with us all through the course of our life. Thank you for the generations that go back for many of us, of those who have followed you. And I pray that there will be other generations uh, in, 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 that will follow us if your coming does not come before they are born and continue on. Pray that there might be a legacy of faith that is passed on to them as well. We love you today and thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen.